So, how do you create typewriter style text in Shutcut? Well, in a few minutes I'm going to show you how to create these demo videos. Now here's a short video title I made. And here's the same text effect, made smaller and used as a lower thirds effect. Also you can do something like this and have a longer passage of text appearing typewriter style. I'll also be showing you how to add typewriter sounds to your typewriter text. Before I start, you should check to see whether your current version of Shutcut already has a typewriter text effect built in within the text rich filter. At the time of making this tutorial video, which is February 2021, this feature was not available, but there was an indication that this feature may be added in the future. If this is the case, you may have no need to watch this tutorial. Now I have two methods to show you today. Method 1 is suited more for just short passages of text or video titles and Method 2 is more suited to longer passages of text. And in the third section of this video, I'll show you how to add those realistic typewriter sounds. So here's Method 1, I'll get straight down to it. Now as you can see, I'm using Shotcut version 21.01.29 and it's January 2021. Now I go to open other and then text and then I type in typewriter text. I drag this to the timeline, then I drag it out a bit and change the thickness to zero. This gets rid of the black border of the text. I'm going to choose a typewriter font, so I go here and I've got a typewriter font on my system called another typewriter. So there it is. Now I'm going to resize and position the text and put it in the center. And then I go to open other color and select a black color. And then I drag that to the timeline and put it on track V2. Next, I go to filters and apply a size, position and rotate filter. I need to select distort in the filter, which allows me to move the boundary box freely. And with the center handle, I move it to here and I expose the letter T only. And then I go to Export Frame. This saves the screen as a PNG image file. So I name it, but I make sure the file name ends with 01. Now the principle of this method is to uncover each letter at a time and export the screen as a PNG image every time. So I rename the file each time I export the frame by replacing the last two digits. So the second frame ends with 02 and the third ends with 03 and so on. However, I'm aware that doing this is a little fiddly and time consuming. So I've thought of a method which is a little quicker and easier to do and reduces the key presses required. I'll tell you about that a little later in this video. For now though, I'll continue in the same way and at the end of this process, I end up with a folder containing 15 PNG images. There they are. Now, if I open them up in photo gallery and select them one after the other, we can see the typewriter text effect. Okay, now I'm going to import these images into Shotcut. To do this, I go to open file and select the first image, and then I go to properties, then select image sequence. So I type in a value of two here. Now Shotcut will then create a video out of all the PNG images giving two frames for each picture and then I drag the previous screen onto the timeline and automatically and very quickly Shotcut puts all the images into one video. Well it looks okay but it may be too fast. Now if that's the case you could experiment with a higher number of frames per picture. For example choosing four frames will give you a video twice as slow as two frames. So let me just try that. I'm going to import the pictures again and this time choose four in this value box. Then I drag the screen to the timeline and the text appears. As you can see, it's slower. In fact, it may still be too fast. So let me do it one more time, this time choosing a value of eight frames. And this gives an even slower typewriter speed. 
You can of course choose the speed which best suits your needs. For now though, I'll continue with my video having just two frames per picture. It's great, now I'm going to create some black space at the beginning by moving that along a little bit. And I'm also going to put in the end frame and drag that into the timeline so that the text doesn't just disappear at the end. I'll just move that along a little bit and then preview and there we go. Right, so I go to export file and I export this as an mp4 video. Now I'm going to find a short video clip to put this text above. It's just an example so this video can be anything. Uh, there's one of some rolling countryside fields. So I add another video track and I drag that down to V2. Oops, I have ripple track switched on, so I'll turn that off. And I'll turn the sound off as well. And I'm going to add another video track and import the black and white typewriter text video that I made. Now, here's a quick tip. The exported video appears here in the jobs pane. All I have to do is to right click, then select open, and the video appears in the preview pane, ready for me to drag to the timeline. There's no need to search for the exported video. So I drag it down into the timeline. Of course, it's got a black background, so that obscures the video below it. Now, to make the black background transparent, I go to filters and select blend mode, and then from the drop down menu, I select add. When you apply a blend mode to a black and white image or video and set it to add, the black completely disappears and the white remains very clear. If you want colour text instead of white, I'll explain in a few minutes how to easily change the white text to a colour. Now just for artistic purposes, I'm going to add a fade out to the clip. Uh, looks great. And that's nearly it. But there's one more thing, I'm going to apply a size, position and rotate filter and I'm going to make it smaller and position it in the bottom left hand corner and I think it makes a great lower thirds effect. Notice that I can make this boundary box disappear by clicking on this cross icon. That looks great. And there we are, I think that looks really good. Now, if you remember, I told you just earlier that I had a technique which slightly speeds up the process of saving the PNGs incrementally each time you export the frames. So here's how it works. Simply save each file with one digit. So begin by calling the first exported frame 1.png, the second as 2.png, and so on. So when the export frame box appears, just type in 1 and then two for the second one, and three for the third one, and so on. Now the advantage of this is that you can save each frame with just two mouse clicks and one key press. It may be just a slight change, but it saves time in the long run. At the end, you probably don't want files with just names one, two, three, etc. So you may want to use the Windows Renaming File facility to rename the files into something meaningful. It's quick and easy, I'll just show you how it works. Select all the images in the folder, point to the first one, right click, choose rename and type a file name of your choice. Windows will automatically add incremental numbers to each file in brackets. Then you can continue the process of importing them into Shotcut using the image sequence feature as I mentioned before. And that's very nearly the end of my method one. But just before I show you method 2, I'd like to show that it's easy to change the white text into coloured text. So here on my timeline, I have my original typewriter text video with white text over a black background. I've put it on V2 and I have my sample rolling fields video under it on V1. So as I described earlier, I add a blend mode filter and set it to add and the black background disappears. Then I go to filters again and apply a colour grading filter. Then watch what happens when I click in random places in the colour wheel here. Yes, the white text changes colour. It's a very simple and effective way of having coloured text if you don't want white. 
And just before I continue with method two, I noticed there's a stopwatch icon in the color grading filter, which means you can keyframe the colors of your text and have them changing color. This is cool. It's a really fun effect that you may like to use. So that's method one. So here's method two. Now for this method, I open Notepad, which is a text editor, and I'm going to type in some text here. Hello, this is an example of typewriter text using Shotcut. It's a great way of showing long passages of text. So I'm going to go to Format, and then I'm going to change the font to another typewriter font, like I did in method one, and also change the size to, I think, 48 pixels. And then I'm going to format the text by adding line breaks to make it look nice. And then the next step is to make a screen capture of the next process. Now to do this, you'll need a screen capture program. There are several programs which do this. Two I can mention are ShareX and OBS. My personal favorite, I think, is ShareX. So that's what I'm using today. I can't actually show you this process because, as you might appreciate, I'm now using the program ShareX to record my screen. So I can't take a recording of me making a recording, if you see what I mean. But this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to continually press backspace. I want to do it in quite a rhythmic and steady way. And this is what happens. And you can see the text starts to disappear letter by letter. So I'm making a screen capture of this which I'm going to make into a video. So when that's done then, I've made my video of that process and I need to open Shotcut and re-import the video. So I put it onto this track here and I go to open other color and put a white color clip onto V1. I go to filters and add a crop rectangle filter to the top clip. And I resize the boundary box to just show the white part of the notepad screen, making sure to select transparent, which of course makes the edge transparent. Now on the left hand side of the crop, I have a bit of the blue color coming through, which I don't want. So first I magnify the screen here, and then I can adjust values in the size position and rotate filter to uh, move the boundary box very precisely and quite a bit of trial and error is involved in this process. Then I restore the magnification to zoom fit. And what I end up with is a completely white screen with black text on it. Now I'm quite aware that my typewriter text is running backwards at the moment, but I can fix that later. Now I'm going to save this as another MP4 file and I do this by going to export file and giving it a name. Now while it's exporting I'm going to show you how you can achieve white text on a black background. I'm going to go to open color and open a black color clip and put it on V1 and I'm going to apply an invert colors filter to the top clip. This now gives me white text on a black background. Then it's export file again, and I'm going to export it again as another MP4. While it's exporting, I'm going to do two more things as well. I'm going to export the frame of the first frame of each video. So that's the part where all the text is showing. And I'll show you why I'm doing that later. So after exporting the white text with the black background, I change the background to white again with a white color clip and remove the invert color filter. And then I can export the frame with a white background and black text as well. Okay, now it's time to open a new shortcut project and I'm going to import a random clip that I have. Okay, now what I'm going to do now is to import the white text with a black background video that I made earlier and I'm going to reverse it. So properties reverse. 
And while Shotcut sorts all that out, I'm also going to reverse the other clip, that's the black text with a white background. Now I'm doing this because I want to show you the white text and also the black text. So when the clip is reversed, it appears as if the text is typed normally. However, it's a little slow, so I'm going to try speeding it up. So in properties, I change the speed. I'm going to try times four here, which actually looks a little fast. So I'm going to try, let's say 1.5, I think, instead. Ah, much better. I think that's about right. Now I'm going to do the same with the other clip, just for demonstration purposes to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to change the speed there to 1.5 again. Now it's looking good, but again there's a black background. Now to get rid of that I go to filters and to blend mode and add a blender mode filter and set it to add. And that removes the black background. And here is my white typewriter text. It looks cool. Now I just want to change the position of the text, so I add a size, position and rotate filter and simply move it downwards. There we are, it looks great. I still have a problem though in that the text disappears at the end. Now to make it hold, I import the exported frame that I made earlier, if you remember, and I'm going to add that to the end of the video and copy the filters from the one clip to the other. And then of course that makes the text hold at the end. I'll just do the same thing with the black text on white background to demonstrate this. So I drag this exported frame and put it at the end here. Now nearly finished, I'm just going to show you how to achieve the black text. It's a similar process, I apply a blend mode filter, but this time, crucially, I go down to multiply, not add, multiply. Now if you do that, it removes the white background, so you can just see the black text on top. Uh, and copy the filters and that is the text effect finished. So that's method one and method two explained. In the last part of this video I'll show you how to add typewriter sounds to your typewriter text. How to add typewriter sounds to the typewriter text. So to begin I go onto the internet and search for typewriter sounds. Now the first result I get is of this YouTube video. So I play it. That's great, the sounds are just what I'm looking for. Now I check it's copyright free, then I open a video downloader, I'm using ClipGrab today, and I capture this video and it saves as an MP4. Then I open Shotcut and select Open File and import it, then drag it to the timeline. I just need the soundtrack so I go to this export tab and in the list I choose mp3 then export file. Then I save it as an mp3 sound file. Then I close and open shortcut again. Now on track V1 I have the video clip featuring the title video of this tutorial you have just seen but without any audio. So I import the typewriter sound mp3 and drag it down to an audio track. I slide it along, then I preview it. You can see the audio waveforms corresponding to the sounds. Now the typewriter sounds don't exactly match with the letters appearing on the screen. It takes a little work to match them up, but it's worth it. Now here's how I do it. Each peak of the audio waveform is a tap of the typewriter. So I go through frame by frame, pressing the right arrow on my computer keyboard each time and using keyboard shortcut S, I split the track into small sections. Each section will be a typewriter tap sound. I'll speed up the process here to demonstrate this. I then add another audio track to make three in total. 
Now I advance frame by frame and stop just at the point the first letter A appears on the screen. I should mention here that I have turned off snapping. The snapping icon is the magnet icon which is blue when switched on and white when switched off. Then I click on the ripple track icon here and move the audio clips along and they all move along. I switch off ripple track and I check that the first tap of the typewriter coincides with the letter A appearing. Then I begin quite a long process of matching all the other taps with the letters appearing on the screen. Notice I use all three audio tracks for this because the letters appear so quickly that I have to overlap the audio clips. Now because it takes a little while I'll speed up the action here. When I need to move the whole row of clips along I switch on the ripple track icon and switch it off after moving the clips. Now I'll cut to the end of the process to save time. I have a handy tip to show you here. I need to copy and paste several clips at the end. So I use what I call the CB technique. Here's how it works. I position the playhead to where I want to paste a new clip. Then I go back and select the clip. Press C to copy it. Then immediately B to paste it at the playhead position. It's very quick and easy. Each time a clip is copied, shut cut makes the playhead move to the end of the copied clip, which is very useful. The action here is speeded up, but you can see the copies of the previous clips being placed at the end. So then I do a bit more positioning and I'm finished. And here's the final result. I preview to check the typewriter sounds match up with the letters appearing. Yep, I'm happy with the result. So my video is now ready for exporting. And that's it for this tutorial. So thanks for watching and good luck with creating your own typewriter text. Bye for now.